what's up everyone Matt here so in this video I'm gonna talk about dashboards the different types that they are what you can use them for and ultimately how to put them all together let's get to it first let's talk about what a dashboard is a dashboard is a special view that allows you to add other views to it right so it's a container of views so that gives you the ability to combine things like this so this is a um, you know a really standard traditional dashboard what I have here is um, each one of these is a different bucket of a subset of this items table, right? So I have needed items, pending items, and items in transit. The idea is people that are on site can request items that they need. Uh, they, when an item is picked up, they'll be moved into the pending status. That way they know, okay, it's being taken care of. Uh, when it's on its way, it's moved to in transit, and then it gets to on site when it's actually there. Um, so that's the idea and this dashboard here is just a a collection of different buckets, right? So it shows three different views each one a different subset of the items, right? These are the ones that still need to be picked up. These are the ones that have been picked up But haven't been transported yet. These are the ones that are on the way and the way that I've created this is if I go to app sheet and I go and I show you the view. So the view is a dashboard and it contains all of these other views and you can specify the, the size. And this is kind of like its own little art form right here, trying to get this to come into it to, to look right, depending on how anyways. Um, but yeah, so this is the basic setup for the dashboard is you just have other views that you've already created. So if I come down here, I can show you all of these other views that are based on slices, the pending items, the needed items, and the items in transit. If we look at the slices, you can see there's a different slice for each status that the item is in. And for each of those slices, we've made a view and all of those views are put inside this main dashboard here. And what you get is this, and I can click on one of the records and get to its actual details. Now there's another type of dashboard that's called an interactive dashboard. And this is an example of one. So an interactive dashboard is the same idea. It combines multiple views together, but the idea is that all of the views share some common reference table behind them. Uh, the records that are collected in the tables, they have a similar reference. So for instance, on this, this is an interactive dashboard. Um, and I have a list of open phases right here. This is a project management app. Um, this, and then this is the phase details, right? So phases, phase detail. Over here, I have pending milestones. This is a completely separate table, but the milestones are referenced to the phase table. And this down here is a, the last log. This is a time logs table. Again, another a completely separate table, but it shares a reference to the phase table. So when I click on one of these phases, all of these views over here adjust themselves interactively. And so the detail shows me the detail view for the record that I clicked on. The milestone, the, this pending milestones view over here is a slice of milestones, which are like the tasks that need to be done. Uh, and when I click on one of the phases over here, the milestones filter, they change. So I only see the pending milestones for whatever phase I've selected. Same thing for the last log. So the idea behind this box is it shows you the last time record that was collected for whatever phase you've selected. And so this shows you how you can use an interactive dashboard to display multiple tables worth of different data, right? I've got time logs, milestones, and phase. Those are three separate tables that are all being shown on the same view. And it's all happening because they share a common reference to the phases table. So the way that you set up an interactive dashboard is the exact same way you set up a regular one. You create the dashboard, you add the views into it, but you turn on the interactive switch. So if we're on this timekeeping dash and we look at the view, right? So this is the dashboard view. You can see it's set up the exact same way where I've got all the various views entered into the thing. And again, getting these sizes to look right, like it doesn't look good here, but it looks good here when I'm actually using it. 
it's a uh, it's kind of you just f keep fiddling with it you'll get it um, but you have this interactive mode down here and if you turn this on what it does is it instead of migrating away to the record when you would click on it which is what normally happens with a normal uh, with a normal dashboard instead what happens is when you click it it provides the like the input for what is this dashboard supposed to be looking at like I want to look at this record I want to look at this record I want to look at that record and so this is how an interactive dashboard works now there's another type of dashboard one that I call an enhanced dashboard that kind of works like an interactive dashboard but it's not making use of the interactive feature um, the way that this works is, so here's an example. This is a, a client's deployed app. And so you can see there's this, uh, there's one card over here that's like the control box. And then there's the display over here. And so I have all of these various different fields that are all made quick editable inside this. And so if I select and I change something, it affects whatever's inside the display. And so I have the ability to, you know, I can, I don't have very much deta uh, details inside here, but uh, so for instance, so this is an interactive using a calendar. I could switch it to, um, this is a hybrid version. So it makes use of both the enhanced filtering over in here, but this is also an interactive dashboard. So it's actually making use of all of the aspects here because I can come in here and I can say, well, I will only show me the activities that are complete. And so then I can see which ones have been completed or only show me the ones that are complete and expired or just the expired or just go back to the regular things that haven't been, you know, adjudic adjudicated yet. But with the enhanced dashboard, the idea is you've got like a current user table. You've got some table somewhere that users are able to store data on and you display that in this form right here with quick editable fields. So literally this box right here is a view of the user table inside this app, but just these few little fields that are used for filtering things. And the way that this list works is it's actually based on a slice and it's looking at all of these fields here for their criteria and based on whatever criteria the user selects the slice then adjusts so all i'm doing is displaying the control box right the little subset so that people can change the input uh, i'm displaying a table view of the slice but i also have a calendar view of the slice and then when we're looking at the table view i have the interactive part turned on so that I'm displaying the detail card of the activities table. So when I select an activity, I can see its act, I can see its details, I can adjudicate it, whatever. The way that that last example was put together makes use of both the enhanced part and the interactive part. Let me show you. So here's this enhanced interactive table view that I have here. Um, and you can see, right, it's just another dashboard that's got my user scout control so that's this little control box type thing right here uh, i have a list of pending activities and then i have a ta and then i have a details of the activities they're just kind of named weird and you can see interactivity is turned on so now because this table back here doesn't share a common reference with these two this box doesn't receive any of the interactivity behavior. When you turn on the interactive dashboard, the only way to get that to work is that they share a common reference. And so here, the list of activities and the activities detail, well, they're one and the same, right? It's just one's an aggregate view, one's a detail view. But the filter control is a slice of the user's table. It has nothing to do with the activities table. So whenever I select something here, the user stuff inside here is not affected at all. But what I've done is I've made it to where the data that you enter inside this filter control box affects this table list of records. So if I say I only want to see stuff from farms next door, now I only see that farm's data. Let me show you how I put this together. So first thing we have to have is a place to store the data. So literally I have, let me find, 
we find my users table. So literally inside my users table, I have a section in the middle that is just full of places for people to store various different variables. The current grower, the current farm, the current field, trap type, crop type, grower category, activity, date, man, date, trapping, so on and so forth, right? I think altogether I have something like 36 different variables, not all in this table, but I have some other ones elsewhere uh, that, that are there available for users to use, setting different flags that I can pull at whenever I need to use it. What you do for the filter control card is you create a view of your current user slice, it's a detail view, but you only include the columns that have the criteria that you want the person to be able to affect in whatever view you're gonna include this box in, right? So I have this filter control and I've said, I want these fields inside here and I've set all of those fields to quick edit. And by doing that, that gives me the ability to display this view to a user and all of those fields are available for edit right there. So it's like a, it's like a control box for your, inner, for your dashboard. And now the next part of this is, is the slice that's looking at all of these controls. And that's based on this right here. So if we go and look at this slice, you can see I've got a monster formula inside here. It takes everything into consideration. So it's a giant and statement with a whole bunch of ifs that are inside it. Most of them look like this, where it says, if something, then do something, otherwise true. And the idea here is when you set it to true as the fallback and you're in an and statement, it basically means skip skip this idea, right? So if I have three different if statements inside there, but they all end in a true for the fallback, then you know, when the if statement is false, then if they all don't have anything and they all fall back, then it's true, true, true. And we're just skipping over all of these if statements. So most of them look like that. Some of them contain other things that need to happen based on if you selected something or not. But the idea here is this slice takes into consideration the activity, the crop type, the grower filter. Uh, let's see, it's the date min, the date max, the current fields, the current farms, current growers. It takes all of those quick edit fields that we put inside the user table into consideration and it filters whatever table it's of. So this is of the rec activities table. So it's literally filtering the, the list of activities. So we only see the records that match the criteria that the person has entered here. And that's then displayed inside of a table view here. And now because I have the interactive dashboard turned on, I can click on this and then see that records details inside the detail view over here. I know there was a lot of detail there that I just kind of went over really fast. If you have any further questions, please let me know down in the comments below. I want to thank you for watching this video. I do appreciate it. If you really want to show your love, make sure you subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. If I haven't gotten there yet, subscribe, dude. Um, if you really want to show your love, I have a Patreon page. It's 10 bucks a month. I've got a lot of goodies over there, some tools that I've created. There's some project apps over there that you can dig through that serve as examples of like what's really possible with AppSheet if you really want to get really complicated with things. Anyways, a whole lot of goodies over there. Otherwise, I'll see you in the community.